All right, here's the scenario. You just worked for hours and hours and maybe even days on your next YouTube video. I just hit my light and you export it and you upload it to YouTube and it uploads fine, but then it takes a day and a half to get to 4K. What? This is something that I've seen a ton of people complain about on Twitter, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with export settings, because honestly, I don't have that issue at all, never have. So what I'm gonna do is jump into DaVinci Resolve today, show you my exact export settings for every single video that I do, and hopefully you guys can tweak a couple things in your own settings, and maybe it will speed up the processing process. But before we do that, huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Puget Systems. More on them later. All right, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. I've got a video, it's been color graded and cut and all that stuff. It's a 4K video, it's three minutes and 28 seconds long. I've already created a name for it. I've already decided where I'm gonna save it. That stuff's pretty self-explanatory. You guys can figure that out. Let's focus on the settings. First of all, when it comes to render, we're going to make sure single clip is selected because that will export everything as one single video file. If you do individual clips, it's gonna render every single clip in your video out as separate clips and we don't want that. I mean, maybe maybe you want that. I, I don't know, who am I to judge? But I, I don't want that, so we're gonna stick with individual clip. Let's move on, make sure our export video box is checked. If you don't have that checked, then you're only gonna get an audio file, and we definitely, definitely don't want that. This is YouTube, it's video, we, we, want, we want video. For format, we're gonna stick with QuickTime, mostly because we are going to be changing our audio bit depth a little bit later on in this video, and we can't change it to what we want if we're in anything other than QuickTime or some of the other some of the other formats have it as well. But we're gonna stick with QuickTime. For codec, we're going to change from H.264 to H.265. Now, H.265 is a bit heavier of a compression than H.264, but it's compressed in a different way. I do not have the brain power to explain the specific differences between H.264 and H.265, but this is actually a format that is great for uploading to streaming services because the way that it's compressed, it makes the video sizes smaller and it still preserves quality. So that's what we want, right? Smaller video sizes so it uploads quicker and preserving quality so you're not uploading a crappy video to YouTube. So there you go. Uh, for encoder, we want to stick with GPU acceleration because, uh, well, that's the only thing available for H.265, which means, I believe, I don't know, H.265 became available after I upgraded to studio, so it may only be available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. If you're using the free version, please let me know, can you render an H.265? Please just, you know, comment below, let me know. Resolution and frame rate, we just wanna make sure matches our project settings. So I've got a 4K DCI file at 24 frames per second. Quality, we're gonna stick with automatic best. Encoding profile, we are going to change from main to main 10. And this has to do with the quality of our final video. Main is an 8-bit profile. Main 10 is a 10-bit profile. And we want to upload a 10-bit profile to YouTube because they're going to add some additional compression onto our video. And when that happens, you kind of sometimes get weird banding or artifacts in your video. Uploading 10-bit will help prevent that from happening. It doesn't work all the time, but it works a lot better than the regular main profile. So we're gonna go with main 10. Keyframes, we're gonna do automatic, but if you are finding yourself getting weird artifacts, especially in like the black areas, the white areas, high contrasted clips, then you might want to change to every and then change this to one frames. I think by default it's at 12, but you can change it down to one and that will definitely make the render process slower. It'll take a lot longer, but 
uh, it will preserve that quality. It'll prevent those artifacts. Rate control, we're gonna keep it VBR, high quality. VBR stands for variable bit rate. So basically it changes the bit rate in order to preserve the quality of the video. Look ahead 16 frames, that's their default setting. We're just gonna keep that as it is. And we're also basically just gonna keep everything in this top section the way it is. Then we're gonna move down to advanced settings. And the only thing we're gonna change here is our color tag and our gamma tag. And what we're gonna change it to is rec 709 and gamma tag is gonna be rec 709A. And doing this is just something I started doing when I noticed people complaining about a weird gamma shift when they were on Mac computers. Apparently the videos weren't looking the way that they're supposed to look. And I was told, I honestly, I'll just be 100% transparent with you, I have not confirmed this, but what I was told is that by changing the color space tag and the gamma tag to Rec. 709 and Rec. 709A, uh, it should help make the video look the way it's supposed to look, no matter what computer you're viewing it on. And then everything else here is gonna be the same. If you did put subtitles in your videos, you can choose to burn them into the video or export them as a separate file. I did a whole video about subtitles. I'll make sure that's linked below. And that's it for the video side of things. Now, word of warning, these settings will add a little bit of a heavier workload to your computer, which is why it's so important that you have a computer that's built for video editing. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Puget Systems makes custom PCs for video editors, gamers, engineers, you name it. And the best part about them is that their PCs are 100% tailor-made for your needs. Here's what I mean. Most PC builders, most custom PC builders have you go to their website, pick and choose all of the parts. They have you figure it out all on your own. And then when you're all said and done, you click order and they build it for you. Pretty simple. What Puget Systems does instead is they hop on a call with you and they listen to exactly what you need this PC for. You describe your workflow, your storage needs and everything, and they design a system that is tailor-made for what you do. I got my Puget build about seven months ago and it was a total game changer. I mean, render times are super fast. DaVinci Resolve basically never crashes except for the beta versions, but that's not their fault. Really, it's just a huge upgrade from the laptop that I was using before. So if you are a video editor, gamer, engineer, or whatever, and you're looking for a PC that will fit your needs and completely up your game, then check out the link in the description and sign up for a free call with Puget Systems today. Thanks so much, Puget, for sponsoring this video. You guys are amazing. Now let's take a look at our audio settings. All right, let's come back up to the top of our settings and click audio. Again, we wanna make sure our export audio box is checked, otherwise you'll be exporting a silent video. Our codec, we're gonna keep it linear PCM. Our sample rate will stick with 48,000 and our bit depth, we're gonna change from 16 to 24. Now I did a whole video about this, I'll link it below, but basically the short version is 16-bit audio, especially when you normalize for YouTube, which tends to get a little bit loud, your audio can start to fall apart and you'll get a weird warbly, artifacty sounding video. And we don't like that. So we change it to 24-bit and it fixes it. Basically, it just, it just fixes it. It works, it's better. So we stick with 24. We're gonna make sure render one track per channel is unchecked. We're gonna make sure render as discrete audio tracks is unchecked. And we're gonna make sure our output track is bus one stereo, which should be the main bus in the Fairlight page. And then finally, we come to this file section and nothing really needs to change here. But one really cool thing is that you can come down and you can see how much space is currently being used on the drive you wanna save and how much space will be used after you render. And then all you have to do is add to render queue and hit render all. All right, so this was a three minute and 28 second long 4K video. It took a minute and three seconds to render, so that's pretty good. Now let's see how long it takes to upload and process to 4K on YouTube. All right, so I am here in my channel dashboard. I'm gonna click the upload, select files, sailing in the harbor.
and it is currently 2.25 p.m. We're already at 15%. Let's say, uh, let's see how long it takes to upload to 4K. All right, quick update. We are at 2.26 p.m. So it's been one minute and we're already 95% processed in the standard definition version. Let's keep on going to 4K. All right, it's 2.27 p.m. It's been one more minute. So it's two minutes since we uploaded the video and we are at 4K processing complete. So hopefully this video helped you understand some of these render settings and what they mean and how they can help with the processing time on YouTube. If so, make sure you give this video a like and comment down below and also check out this video which will give you five more workflow hacks in DaVinci Resolve. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.